On September 12th, 2017, Apple introduced the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and 10, the first generation of iPhones to feature wireless charging. So it was fitting that Apple also introduced an accessory called AirPower that same day, which was Apple's take on the wireless charging mat. And in order to differentiate AirPower from its competition, Apple included some incredible features, like the ability to place your Apple Watch, iPhone, and AirPods anywhere on the mat to charge. AirPower also allowed the iPhone to display the charging level of other devices on the mat. Features that had never been possible before with previous wireless charging products, and this caused many people to wonder whether that kind of technology was possible at all. But Phil Schiller assured us Apple knew how to do it. And all of this technology was housed in a slim, compact design unlike anything else on the market. But there was a catch. AirPower never actually made it to market. The initial release date of early 2018 came and went, and in March 2019, Apple announced the AirPower project was cancelled, saying, After much effort, we've concluded AirPower will not achieve our high standards. So in this video, we're going to explore what gave Apple the confidence to announce an unfinished product, and discuss the insurmountable problems they faced that ultimately led to AirPower being cancelled. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and if you want to help decide which video topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed, and these voting polls will show up in your mobile activity feed. Now the biggest question I had after Apple cancelled AirPower wasn't what prevented Apple from making it, but rather, what gave Apple the confidence to announce it. Because although the company has delayed products before, like the white iPhone 4, the AirPods, and the HomePod, they've never announced a product that they weren't certain they could deliver. That was until AirPower. And we knew Apple didn't have a working prototype of the product when it was announced, because after the presentation, the hands-on area featured AirPower units that didn't actually charge anything, which was very unusual for Apple. Even the Apple Watch was demoed by employees after its introduction, despite not being released for another seven months. And if you listen closely to Phil Schiller's choice of words when introducing AirPower, you'll get the impression that the product hadn't been figured out yet. If our team wants to create something, I think all of us are going to want to use, and it might actually help move the entire industry forward. So we're going to give you a sneak peek of this idea right now. This is not possible with current standards, but our team knows how to do this. So why did Apple announce AirPower prematurely? Well, I think it's because of a couple factors. First, there were engineers working on the project who genuinely believed AirPower's technology was viable. And while there were also engineers who disagreed, Apple's leadership decided to bet on the idea that AirPower could be executed successfully. Maybe because the project was entering its final stage of development, or perhaps Apple had some sort of working prototype that seemed promising enough. Another reason why Apple announced the product early was to make sure it was featured alongside the new wireless charging iPhones. That way customers wouldn't buy third-party wireless charging solutions and instead wait for Apple to release AirPower. And that's exactly what all of us Apple fans did. But little did we know Apple would run into serious hardware obstacles with AirPower that ended up being impossible to overcome. So what exactly were those problems? Well, they can be broken down into three categories. Heat management, unreliable communication between devices, and mechanical interference. Let's start with AirPower's heat issues. A problem that was brought up by John Gruber of the Daring Fireball back in September 2018. He wrote, AirPower really is well and truly effed. Something about the multi-coil design getting too hot. Way too hot. There are engineers who looked at AirPower's design and said it could never work thermally, and now those same engineers have that told-you-so smug look on their faces. Last year, Apple was apparently swayed by arguments that they could figure out a way to make it not get hot. They were clearly wrong. I think they've either had to go completely back to the drawing board and start over with an entirely different design, or they've decided to give up and they just don't want to say so. And Gruber was exactly right. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there were Apple engineers who didn't think AirPower's design was thermally possible from the beginning, and that's because of its multi-coil design. Up until that point, there was no charging mat on the market that had more than five coils. But according to several rumors, Apple was planning on including anywhere from 21 to 24 coils in AirPower, resulting in a heat management nightmare. And because Apple wanted AirPower to be one of the thinnest mats available, there was virtually no way to engineer efficient heat dissipation. So why did Apple need to include so many coils to begin with? 
Well, it was for a couple reasons. In order to fulfill their promise of air power charging any device no matter where it's placed, Apple needed to eliminate what are called black spots, or areas on a charging mat that don't deliver any power due to the absence of a charging coil. So the only solution is to layer multiple coils across the entire surface of the mat, ensuring power can be delivered to a device that's placed in any position. But things get a lot more complicated when you consider the Apple Watch, which uses Apple's own proprietary wireless charging technology rather than the Qi standard used with the iPhone and AirPods. So that meant Air Power had to feature a layer of Qi charging coils plus a second layer of Apple Watch charging coils, all inside of a charging mat that was designed to be very thin and compact. So you can probably imagine why engineers at Apple didn't think the product could be made. Now let's talk about the second problem AirPower faced, which was unreliable communication between devices. You see, Apple's second promise was that their wireless charging mat would be able to receive charging data from all the devices placed on it and send that data to a charging iPhone. That way users could quickly and easily view the charging level of each device from the iPhone's display rather than building LED indicators into AirPower like we've seen on other charging mats. But this was a lot easier said than done. Apple included a custom charging chip in AirPower to manage communication between devices, decide which charging coils to activate, and monitor the charge levels for each device. But Apple couldn't get this chip to perform reliably. The hardware and software teams had trouble establishing a line of communication between AirPower and the devices it was powering. And the technology became even more faulty when trying to send charging data from AirPods or an Apple Watch through AirPower into an iPhone to display all the device's charging levels. On top of all of this, AirPower had trouble deciding which coils to activate in order to deliver the most efficient charge to the devices placed on it. This led to problems with uneven charging speed since some devices received more power than others. So not only did AirPower have heat management issues, but it was also facing electronics issues, meaning Apple wouldn't be able to deliver on AirPower's two most important features, placing your Apple devices anywhere and viewing charge levels from your iPhone. But Apple's troubles didn't stop there, because there was one last obstacle AirPower faced, and that was with mechanical interference. The large number of charging coils squeezed into air power meant interference was inevitable, and it resulted in reduced charging efficiency and even more heat troubles. Now Apple had some success in shielding each coil in a way that reduced interference, but that led to even more complex circuitry that would have required air power to be thicker and larger, a compromise Apple wasn't willing to make. So when Apple's leadership realized these significant problems couldn't be resolved, they were faced with a difficult decision make a watered-down version of AirPower that didn't have the features Apple promised, or cancel the product altogether and admit the concept was too ambitious. And as we all know, Apple decided to cancel AirPower, which I think was the right decision. Because imagine if Apple released a version of AirPower that was faulty or didn't work as advertised. Or what if they released a crippled version of the product that didn't offer any unique benefits over its competition? At that point, Apple would have received a serious amount of backlash for releasing a product that wasn't up to the company's standards. And that's exactly why I think cancelling the product was the right move. If you can't deliver on the product you promised, then there's likely no reason to bring it to market at all. But of course, not everyone felt that way. Many people were upset by AirPower's cancellation, and some used it as evidence to prove that Apple is doomed or that Tim Cook needs to be fired. LOL, man didn't really care about this product, but the continue fall of Apple is accelerating. Gone are the years where Apple innovated and was able to pull off the first private supercomputer, the thinnest laptop, a media player, internet browser, phone in one thing, a new internet browsing device like a laptop. Now they just say, nope, can't do it, our bad. Tim needs to go. Tim Cook gotta go. All he cares about is profit, and Apple has devoted all their resources to iPhone, abandoning Mac. Steve Jobs cared more about the Apple products and ecosystem, not profit. Now, I clearly don't agree with those comments since Tim Cook has been doing a phenomenal job at leading Apple since Jobs' departure, but I do hope this reminds them that announcing a product before it's ready is a big risk that should be avoided if possible.
So after air power was cancelled, thousands of customers waiting on the product were forced to look elsewhere for a wireless charging solution. And this caused companies like Nomad to sell out of their most popular charging mats in just hours. In fact, the base station I bought was put on back order and took three weeks to be shipped, so there definitely would have been a very high demand for air power if it was in fact released. Now the last thing I want to discuss is the future of wireless charging. Clearly Apple and other major tech companies are serious about advancing wireless technology as much as possible. Samsung recently announced their new Galaxy S10 smartphone, which is capable of delivering power to other wireless charging devices. And I think we'll see similar technology on the new iPhones when they're announced this fall. And while Apple's goals for air power were too ambitious, things might change in a few years from now as wireless charging technology matures. We may end up seeing the product after all, or perhaps an even better charging solution that Apple develops using technology that isn't available today. Now I want to thank Honey for helping to support this channel. Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds promo codes and applies them at the checkout on over 20,000 websites like Amazon and eBay so you know you're getting the lowest price possible. I think Cardi said it best, if you order stuff without using Honey, you're actually throwing money away. And it's pretty easy to understand how it works. When you use a coupon, Honey earns a small commission from the merchant and passes the savings on to you. So it's a win-win for everyone involved. And that's probably why over 10 million people are already using Honey. So there's really no reason not to start using it today. Honey is completely free and can be installed on your computer in just two clicks. Don't take it from me, take it from my subscribers. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com apple. That's joinhoney.com apple. And thanks again to Honey for sponsoring this video.